Welcome to YQ Academy SQL Interview Questions and Answers. 1. Explain Create Database Syntax. The Create Database statement is used in SQL to create a new database within a database management system DBMS. Here is an example of using the Create Database statement in a typical scenario. This example creates a new database named My Database using the default settings and collation of the DBMS. It's worth noting that creating a database usually requires appropriate permissions or privileges within the DBMS. Typically, only database administrators or users with elevated privileges can create databases. 2. How to restart SQL in single user mode. 1. Stop the SQL Server service. Open the services console on your operating system. You can access it through the control panel or by searching for services in the start menu. Look for the SQL Server service and stop it. The service name typically includes the version of SQL Server you are using, such as SQL Server Misclerver. 2. Open the command prompt. Open a command prompt with administrative privileges. To do this, right-click on the command prompt application and select Run as administrator. 3. Navigate to the SQL Server executable directory. In the command prompt, navigate to the directory where the SQL Server executable SQL Server X is located. The location may vary depending on your SQL Server version and installation settings. By default, it is located in the bin folder within the SQL Server installation directory. For example, the path might be C. Program files Microsoft SQL Server MS SQL 15. I'm Sesclair Verms Colbin. 4. Start SQL Server in single user mode. Run the following command to start SQL Server in single user mode. This command starts SQL Server in single user mode, allowing only one connection at a time. You will see log messages indicating that SQL Server is running in single user mode. 5. Connect to SQL Server. Open a new command prompt or use SQL Server client tool to connect to the SQL Server instance running in single user mode. You should specify the appropriate connection parameters, such as server name, instance name, and authentication method. For example, to connect using SQL Server Management Studio SSMS. You can specify the server name as localhost or 127.0.0.1 and select Windows Authentication or provide the appropriate SQL Server login credentials. 6. Perform necessary tasks. Once connected to SQL Server in single user mode, you can perform the required tasks such as troubleshooting, database recovery, or making necessary configuration changes. Three. How to start SQL Server in minimal configuration mode. 1. Stop the SQL Server service. Open the services console on your operating system. You can access it through the control panel or by searching for services in the start menu. Look for the SQL Server service and stop it. The service name typically includes the version of SQL Server you are using, such as SQL Server Misclerver. 2. Open the command prompt. Open a command prompt with administrative privileges. To do this, right-click on the command prompt application and select Run as administrator. 3. Navigate to the SQL Server executable directory. In the command prompt, navigate to the directory where the SQL Server executable SQL Server X is located. The location may vary depending on your SQL Server version and installation settings. By default, it is located in the bin folder within the SQL Server installation directory. For example, the path might be C. Program files Microsoft SQL Server MS SQL 15. I'm Sesclair Verms Colbin. 4. Start SQL Server in minimal configuration mode. Run the following command to start SQL Server in minimal configuration mode. This command starts SQL Server in minimal configuration mode which essentially starts only the basic essential components of SQL Server without loading additional features or user databases. 5. Verify the minimal configuration mode. Once SQL Server has started in minimal configuration mode, 
You can verify it by connecting to the server using SQL Server Client Tool, such as SQL Server Management Studio West SMS, or by checking the SQL Server error log. The error log will contain messages indicating that SQL Server started in minimal configuration mode. 4. As a part of your job, where are DBCC commands that you commonly use for database maintenance? 1. The BCC Check DB. This command is used to check the logical and physical integrity of all the objects in a database. It performs a thorough check of the database, including the system tables and indexes, and identifies any corruption or consistency issues. 2. DBCC Checkable. This command checks the integrity of a specific table and its associated indexes. It helps identify any corruption or structural problems within the table. 3. DBCC Check a lot. This command checks the consistency of disk space allocation structures in the database. It verifies the allocation and usage of data and index pages and helps identify any allocation related issues. 4. DBCC Shrink Database. This command is used to reduce the size of a database by removing unused space. It can reclaim disk space by shrinking the data and log files of the database. 5. DBCC Shrink File This command is used to shrink the size of a specific data or log file of a database. It can be helpful when a specific file has excessive free space that can be reclaimed. 6. DBCC Update Usage this command updates the usage information for a database, recalculating the space used by objects. It can be useful after significant changes have been made to the database, such as adding or removing large amounts of data. 7. DBCC Index Defrag This command defragments the leaf level of an index to improve its performance. It reorganizes the physical storage of index pages and can help reduce fragmentation. 8. DBCC free per cache. This command clears the procedure cache, removing all execution plans and forcing SQL Server to compile new execution plans for subsequent queries. It can be useful in scenarios where you want to clear the cache and start with a clean slate. 5. What are statistics? Under what circumstances they go out of date? How do you update them? Statistics in a database provide information about the distribution and density of data within tables or indexes. They help the query optimizer determine the most efficient execution plans for queries by providing cardinality estimates and helping it make decisions on index selection, join strategies, and other optimization tasks. Statistics can go out of date in several circumstances, including 1. Data modification. When a significant number of rows are inserted, updated, or deleted in a table, the statistics associated with that table can become stale or inaccurate. This is because the distribution of data may have changed, and the existing statistics may no longer reflect the current data characteristics. 2. Index Maintenance Rebuilding or reorganizing indexes can also impact the statistics associated with the indexed columns. If indexes are modified, it's essential to update the corresponding statistics to ensure accurate cardinality estimates. 3. Auto-update threshold. Database systems have a threshold or threshold-based mechanism to determine when statistics should be automatically updated. If the threshold is not reached, the statistics may not be automatically updated, leading to outdated information. To update statistics, you can use the following methods. 1. Automatic Statistics Update Most database systems have an automatic statistics update feature that periodically updates statistics based on predefined thresholds or triggers. This ensures that statistics stay up to date without manual intervention. 2. Manual Statistics Update You can manually update statistics using the appropriate database command. For example, in Microsoft SQL Server, you can use the update statistics command to update statistics for a specific table or index. This allows you to have more control over when and which statistics are updated. 3. Full database statistics update. In some cases, you may need to update statistics for the entire database. 
This can be done using database maintenance plans or specific database administration tools provided by the database system. This is the end of our SQL interview questions. We hope you enjoyed learning with YQ Academy. Until next time, goodbye.